hundred years had passed since slavery was abolished. Martin King, Martin Luther King Jr., wanted to make his mark, so he called people to gather in Washington, D.C. And one quarter of a million people gathered for this particular session. Shortly after the ceremony began, Martin Luther King walked up the steps of Lincoln Memorial. And, of course, he began his famous speech, I Have a Dream. By using the biblical language he used, King created a moral imperative. His marchers became more like crusaders, and he himself became a symbolic Moses to deliver Americans to the Promised Land. King's speech was structured somewhat like a classic tale of good with triumph exceeding over evil. Within two months of King's speech, the Congress passed a new law or bill, and for many, this was a success. The whole rally was a success, and for many others, this dream could not come soon enough. And as I share with you Martin Luther's speech, I would just like for you to think about how you would feel today if your mother, your grandmother, your daughter, your grandchild walked up to a washroom, a public washroom, and on the door was blacks only. Or if your, somebody belonged to you went to sit on a bus seat and you were told to get up because it was for blacks only. Well, this is what the blacks lived through, and that's just a small sample of some of the things they lived through. And thank goodness for people like Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks, changes were made. I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom our nation has ever known. Five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Pro Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. But 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. 100 years later, the Negro, the life of the Negro, is sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. 100 years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. 100 years later, the Negro is still languished in the corners of American society and finds himself an exile in his own land. When the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and Declaration of Independence, they were signing a promissory note to which every American was to fall here. This note was a promise that all men, yes, black men as well as white men, would be guaranteed the unalienable <coughs> rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is obvious today that America has defaulted on this promissory note insofar as her citizens of color are concerned. Instead of honoring this sacred obligation, America has given the Negro people a bad check, a check which has come back marked insufficient funds. But we refuse to believe that the bank of justice is bankrupt. We refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great vaults of opportunity of this nation. And so we've come to cash this check, a check that will give us, upon demand, the riches of freedom and the security of justice. We have also come to this hallowed spot to remind America of the fierce urgency of now. Now is the time to make real the promises of democracy. 
Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. Now is the time to lift our nation from the quicksands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. Now is the time to make justice a reality for all of God's children. There are those who are asking the devotees of civil, civil rights, when will you be satisfied? We can never be satisfied as long as the Negro is the victim of the unspeakable horrors of police brutality. We cannot be satisfied as long as a Negro in Mississippi cannot vote or a Negro in New York believes he has nothing for which to vote. No, no, we are not satisfied and we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream.